Hey peoples, it's your girl, Sexy Sapphire, and it's been a long time since I sat down to talk to you guys, but I'm the type who I like people to look me in my eyes when I'm talking, so I'm going to take my glasses off, but it's been quite some time since I sat down to talk to you guys, and it's time we catch up. It's, um, wow, it's like the 26th of July, 2016, like, July is gone. The year has gone. Uh, my birthday is in less than a month. I'm turning 35. I can't believe that I'm turning 35. You know, I just celebrated last, earlier this month my 10-year anniversary at Sexy Sapphire. And it's like, wow, 10 years. I've been doing this for 10 years. In 10 years, I went from a secretary to administrative assistant to um, starting a MySpace for fun to getting noticed as a model to traveling across the U.S. to uh, being in adult videos uh, to wow it's just I only wanted to be a writer um, from adult video to um, radio show hosting, from radio show hosting to writing for a magazine. Uh, I went from writing for a magazine to writing for multiple magazines, from writing for magazines to being a paid blogger, from being a paid blogger to being a freelance writer, um, model, book cover model, magazine cover model, who started her own talent promotion company. And now I run a talent promotion company and I write for a living. And it's like, wow, I did all this in 10 years. Like in May of 2006 is when I first even got the idea that I wanted to do more than sit behind my computer desk up until May of 2006, I had, you know, graduated from receptionist to secretary to administrative assistant, and I was working in corporate America, and I was pretty happy. I had a decent job. I was 25 years old. I was on salary. I had been on salary for years. Um, I would go to corporate Christmas parties out of town. I had worked nowhere that people my age had really worked. My first real job was at the jail. I worked at uh, the Baltimore City Detention Center at the age of 19. You know, a lot of people see you and they see who you allow yourself to be viewed as, but they don't really know who you are. Um, I tell people all the time, I was successful at creating branding and taking Sapphire to distance because I come from corporate America. My background is sufficient um, to show people that I can really accomplish anything I set out to do because that's how I was trained. Um, when you're working in a jail and the school system, you really don't have too many other options except for to get it right, to do your research, to know what you're talking about, and to do it. You know, there is no um, what should be done in these structured structured uh, settings, it what has to be done. And you follow what has to be done. And that's kind of what I did with Sapphire. I never created a business plan, not once, not one year. What I did was I set goals. Every year I set goals. This is what I want to do this year. This is where I want to be. Um, the more people told me I couldn't achieve a particular goal, the higher it climbed on my list, you know. Um, a lot of people don't realize that when I started Sexy Sapphire, it was just a joke. You know, I had posted some really old pictures of myself from like five years prior to me starting my MySpace. And people were like, oh, you're so pretty, but you never smile. And I didn't, I didn't smile. Um, what a lot of people don't know about me is that my front tooth had been damaged since I was seven years old, maybe. You know, I first broke my front tooth when I was seven playing Ring Around the Rosie. I broke the same tooth again when I was in the sixth grade. I broke the same tooth again when I was in the 11th grade. Yeah, the 11th grade. So, you know, my smile was always a little awkward, even though it wasn't horrible. 
and I just I didn't smile I didn't like to draw attention to my mouth um, also I wasn't the happiest person back then you know I was always sad um, I always wanted to hurt myself I didn't know why I was so sad I mean I had dealt with all kinds of trauma so you know I would relive these things in my head from being uh, physically abused at such a young age to being molested at such a young age to being raped as a teenager to being emotionally abused by my mother um, to watching one of my parents murders in front of me to watching my other parent die of AIDS to being thrown in the system having my whole family ripped from me you know there was a lot that I went through um, as a very, very young person and by the time I was, well, really by the time I was seven, I was damaged, but I didn't know it. You know, I had my first blackout at seven, but no one knew what it was, and we surely didn't talk about mental illness back then. This was 1987, you know. Um, thankfully, I got diagnosed in 2010 with mental illness, and that made my life so much better because it made me understand who I was why I am the way I am, why I do some of the things I do, and why I think the way I do. And once I was able to figure out why I was the way I was, I was just able to incorporate my mental illness into my day-to-day -day life, if that makes sense. I no longer had to live like I didn't know what was going on. I just did the best I could to cope what was going on, if that makes any sense. So, you know, um, that was almost seven years ago. And in the seven years almost since I've been diagnosed as disabled, wow, my life has changed. You know, I tell you all of these things because there's some people who are unfamiliar with me. You know, Sexy Sapphire has been around for 10 years, but there's some people who are unfamiliar with who I really am. You know, they see the model, um, they see the former adult entertainer. Some luckily now see the writer, but very few people get insight into the person except for when I do these videos like my Sexy Sapphire Chronicles. This series is gonna be titled Sapphire Says, and it's gonna be the second of my series that I start doing for my YouTube. Um, the first series is the Sexy Sapphire Chronicles, which I introduced you to in late 2014 um, and we've done seven videos so far um, and the Sexy Sapphire Chronicles is more so to tell you about the person behind Sapphire because people think that Sapphire is this wild crazy entity. She's not. Sapphire is so controlled. Everything I do with her is a business step, a business move. So. Um, the idea of Sapphire that I've given you is what I want you to see. It's just that simple. Um, is that who I am? Is it who I used to be? In a lot of ways. But the person that I used to be was 10 times worse than Sapphire I could ever be. That's why I created the Sexy Sapphire Chronicles, to tell you about the real person behind Sapphire. Because Sapphire is simply a character. You know, she's very controlled. Everything with her is a business move. It, nothing, nothing, nothing is random. Nothing is, I don't care if you see me doing something that you think, oh, Sapphire would never do that. I probably planned it. I probably planned it because that's how I am with business. I come from corporate America. Um, but these videos, these videos are real. This is unscripted. There's no person behind me. There's no cue cards. There's no anything that I sat down with when I start these videos except for a concept of what I want to convey to you. And that's kind of part of what I want to do next as Sapphire slash Melanie because I really introduced Melanie to the world now. And hi, I'm Melanie. Um, I really introduced myself to the world as the person behind Sapphire. I want to become a motivational speaker. Um, my next big goal is to get out into small settings. 
and to start talking to people about all kinds of things because my story gives me so many different diverse views on life. Um, I want to talk to young girls who have been raped, molested, who think that that defines who they are and that they're damaged and that they'll never get better. You know, these people who walk around carrying the shame of their molesters, I want to tell them they have no reason to carry that shame. I want them to hold their heads high. And I want to talk to these young girls and women. Um, I want to talk to women who survived domestic violence. I grew up in a house where I was beat from the age of two because my mother was a battered woman. She allowed herself to be battered and she allowed her child to be battered. I want to talk to women who grew up in that environment or who live in that environment. I too at one point dated someone who put his hands on me. I didn't allow it, I pressed charges. I moved forward, I showed up to every court date. I can't say the same for every woman who grew up in my house. There was a woman who grew up in my house who ended up in a very abusive relationship. I had to distance myself from her for some time. Our relationship never recovered, though I love her like a sister. Um, I want to talk to women who have survived domestic violence and abuse and help them understand that that's the past. And it might be a part of their memories and it might be a part of who they are but it doesn't have any bearing on their future and that they have to become whole again. I wanna teach women how to get past these problems that we internalize and we hold like they are our problems. They're not, we are the victims sometimes of things that have nothing to do with us. And we have to understand that just because we are a victim doesn't mean we have to live as victims. I wanna help women with that. I come from the gutter. I was abused. I lived in the hood my whole life. I lived in a rat infested house as a kid. At, at some points in my life, I lived in a house where you had to pour water down the back of the toilet to flush it. I lived a life where if I wanted deodorant, body wash, the soap I liked. I had to go sleep with some stranger. And there are so many women like me. There are so many women who ended up in poverty, despair, hard situations where they were forced to make decisions they wouldn't have made under other circumstances. And people tell you that once you're like that, that you're like that. They tell you once you've gone down a certain road, that's who you are. But I'm living proof that you're not. I'm living proof that poverty doesn't stop you from chasing your dreams. I'm living proof that mental illness doesn't stop you from chasing your dreams. I'm living proof that being a victim doesn't stop you from chasing your dreams. I'm living proof that being a young mother doesn't stop you from chasing your dreams. Now, has this chase been easy? Have I um, made the best decisions along the way? Have Has my son had everything he should have, including all my time when he needs it? No. Chasing your dreams is hard work and it's sacrifice. It's not being there on your son's birthday sometimes. It's going places where you don't know anybody and you feel uncomfortable, but still having to be the life of the party. Sometimes it's no sleep. For me, it started with me sitting up in a corner of a room that was half the size of this one, where the window had a crack in it and I had to freeze <laughs> while I was doing webcam shows with a smile on my face so nobody would know that I was freezing. I couldn't put clothes on because I had to get customers, but I couldn't warm up. I'd be sitting there freezing, and no one knew my house was freezing. 
chasing my dream. You know, chasing my dream meant when I got the offer to go to Vegas for seven days, all expense paid to work conventions and be a radio show correspondent. And I had $50 to my name to last me seven days. It meant getting on that plane, you know. Chasing your dream isn't gonna always be easy. It isn't gonna always even come in a convenient way. But if you want something, there's nothing in your past that can change what you can do in your future. Nothing at all. You know, it's weird. I was watching a video documentary this weekend on Dick Cheney. Um, it was called The World According to Dick Cheney, I believe. And I think it was either on Netflix or Hulu. And, you know, Dick Cheney, our former vice president, and um, I found it hilarious because he started off as a drunk. And I didn't know. I didn't know that Dick Cheney was a young drunk and that he had been arrested multiple times for DUIs and that his, well, at the time, girlfriend, who we knew as, you know, his wife, Lynn, um, almost didn't even marry him because she wasn't going to put up with a vagabond like him. And he went on to become the U.S. Uh, vice president with George Bush. You know, it's, your past is your past. Who you used to be is who you used to be. When I started writing professionally, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified that people would associate me with my porn and wouldn't let me be a writer. I, I was terrified that I want to go to school. <laughs> I want to go to school. And the thing that keeps me from going to school the most is that I'm terrified of how people react to my past. I go to church. I don't go anymore. I go to church back in about three years ago. I was, no, it was 2010. In 2010, I was very active in the church. And um, I stayed active in this church until 2015. I was very active in the church in 2010. And my disability came through. And I wanted to donate some money to this church that I was very active at. And my son was a participant in the summer program. And so I donated $500 to the uh, church's summer program because I had worked there as a volunteer the year before and saw how we struggled a little with some money. And I knew that, you know, the $500 would almost cover pretty much everything the kids needed so the church wouldn't have to stress, right? It's a two-week program. Okay. So I donate $500 to this two-week program for the kids. And the first week of the program, I kept saying, where's all that stuff? Where are their balls? Why don't they have games? Why don't they have this? Why don't they have this? Where is all the, all the stuff they should have? Well, turns out that one of the people who were running the summer program had decided she didn't want porn money. She didn't want to spend my money on the summer program because she didn't approve of how she found out I make my money. That wasn't porn money. It was my social security turned into my first disability payment money. And when God blessed me, the first thing I did was bless his children. But she didn't want my money. And so I had to actually like go to the pastors and the higher ups at the church and say, hey, do you know the kids are suffering because one of your members are judging me? That happens. That happens anywhere I make myself comfortable. It doesn't happen on a regular like, oh, I can't go to the store. But anytime I make myself comfortable in any kind of environment and people get used to me being around, people start questioning you know, who I am. And I don't give them answers, but somebody else seems to always give them answers. 
And so I face that dilemma now because um, I launched the talent promotion website. And my talent promotion website has absolutely nothing to do with who I used to be. My talent promotion website um, is my way of giving back. When I was coming up in the industry, nobody uh, was doing too much in this area. Um, I'm in Baltimore. No one was doing too much in this area. There was never anyone for me to go to for advice as far as what am I doing? How do I build a fan base? Um, social media was new. So the whole idea of online marketing, um, who should I not work with, uh, reputable companies, like there was absolutely no way to get any kind of real information for me in Baltimore. Um, there also wasn't many platforms for an up and comer. Everybody wants to deal with people who are very established, people who have a big fan base, people who have a lot of money to spend on promotion. That leaves out a lot of people. It leaves out a lot of people. So what I did was I launched a platform for everybody. I launched a platform for the everyday person who is chasing their dream. Um, I don't feature celebrities on my site. I don't even update on celebrities on my site. I don't care what a celebrity is doing because they have enough promotion, free and paid. I don't really follow celebrities either though. I don't watch reality TV. I don't listen to mainstream music that often. That's just not who I am. I'm eclectic. I'm looking for indies. I'm looking for up and comers. I'm looking for people who have been turned away somewhere else, but know that they're worth the attention, you know? Um, I've been told so many times that I couldn't achieve every dream I ever had. I've been told more times this week <laughs> than you could probably imagine that I was ugly. I'm far from ugly. But that's just my opinion, you know? It's my opinion. Who am I to tell somebody else that I'm attracted to them? And that's what a lot of us have a problem with. A lot of us have a problem discerning the difference between our opinion of ourselves and what other people think of us. We internalize other people's thoughts and opinions of us. Those are irrelevant. See, whether anybody ever clicks like on these videos, I'm gonna to continue to do them because I know that they can help somebody. Whether anybody reaches out to me via email and says, your video helped me, or I'd like to talk to you more, or um, I'd like to have you come and talk to my small group, it wouldn't stop me because God told me that this is what I'm supposed to do. He told me who I am, just like he tells you who you are. He tells you if you're a painter. He tells you if you're a writer. He tells you if you should be out here screaming and shouting in the streets with a goddamn on plaque card in your hand because you are going to change the world. He tells you who you are. And we let outsiders tell us who we shouldn't be. I've had so many people tell me I was too ugly to be a model. Well, my ugly ass has been on the cover of a book, multiple magazines, and inside of more magazines than I can count. I had people tell me that nobody would pay attention to my writing. Well, I'm a paid writer. I had somebody steal my website from me. That was back in 2007. That taught me to build websites. Now I build websites for other people. No matter what somebody else interferes with in your life, you have the ability to overcome. There is nothing you don't have the ability to overcome if you want it. I mean, look at me. I'm sitting in front of you. I'm articulate. Articulate. I have dentures now, so my words come out a little um, slurred sometimes, but I have a beautiful smile, so it's worth it. I'll slur a little, 
so that I can feel comfortable and confident when talking to you. Um, but I was saying, I'm a very articulate woman, but I'm also legally disabled. I'm not physically disabled. My disability is here. My disability is here. But I'm far from crazy. Maybe some parts of me are. But for my disability to be here, I want you to understand the things that I'm saying to you and how I'm articulating them to you. For my disability to be here, it's hard to believe I do the things that I do. It's hard to believe I'm as successful as I am. But I do what I want. I get what I want. I chase what I want. And I don't let any outside people tell me I'm not worthy of what I want and what I feel um, God is telling me is for me. I want people to understand that life is about choices. Life is about decisions. And every day we decide who we are. We decide it with our actions or our inactions. You never know when the day comes that it's going to be your last day. We live in a society where mass shootings have become normal, where people are killing people randomly, where you can't even go to the corner store and trust that you're going to make it home. One thing for sure is that even if you live to a ripe old age, as you're laying in your bed at 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100, you will not be pondering all of the people who came into your life and told you what you shouldn't do and couldn't do. You will be pondering why you didn't do all the things that you wanted to do. The things you knew you were capable of, the things you dreamt of. You won't even remember the name of that friend who wasn't a real friend. You won't remember the name of the teacher who told you you would never be nothing but a thug. You won't even remember the name of that neighbor who kept calling the police on you. But your life will flash by and you will remember all of the missed opportunities. You will remember how bad you hurt every time you saw someone living your dream. So don't be that person. Don't be that person who has to constantly say to yourself, I would do this, but I could do this if only. Just do it. Know that anything that's in your heart is worth chasing. That no matter where you come from, you can have whatever you want if you're willing to work hard. Um, I want to be able to help people to get to where I am and beyond. Because where I am is just a starting point. It's just a starting point. I'm just lucky to be in a frame of mind finally that I can recognize my gifts and my talents. I can take the good with the bad. I can see the lesson in everything. Um, I can depend on myself and my own ideas, my own thoughts, rather than what the world tells me. I have my hair pinned up right now. But one of the biggest things I did recently was shed the standard of beauty I was growing up to believe in. You know, I'm a little black girl. 
they started perming my hair before I could damn near talk, you know. My hair was always permed and straightened and flat ironed and when you get old enough, you got the wigs and the weave and the braids and everything so that your hair looks nice and straight and European. Stop letting the world tell me it was pretty. When I looked at women, what I found beautiful was women who looked like me. I've always been in love with natural hair and dreadlocks, especially. And now I have them. And people look at me and they say, you didn't have your hair like that before? I say, no. He said, I swear you just seemed like you had your hair like that before. And I say to them, no. It's just that I finally look like myself. I look like me now. I don't look like how somebody told me I'm supposed to look. I look like how I've always felt I was supposed to look. You know? And I want to kind of teach women how to get to that point. To love themselves for who they are. To see the future is bright despite the past. To be able to ignore the outside world. Um, to know that every dream is is worth chasing. And to teach themselves how to love themselves. So that's really what I want to do is to get into public speaking now. And I'm going to be doing a bunch of different videos on a bunch of different topics. And this is kind of just like my intro to Sapphire Says. Welcoming you to my 2016. Um, giving you an overview of why I'm doing this. And I'm even gonna break some pieces of this down into a smaller video, little bites, because there are some things that some people might need to hear and not have to wait to the whole video to hear, you know? But I'm back. And as usual, I'm chasing my dreams. I wanna be a motivational speaker. So, until somebody books me to stand in front of these small crowds, I'm taking on you, the whole world, as my audience. Sapphire loves you. I'll let you later.